color is an extremely powerful and influential factor when it comes to judging the acceptability of food. It can trigger an immediate and powerful positive or negative response that will determine whether something will be purchased or not. Color influences meat purchasing decisions more than any other factor. To consumers, meat color is an indicator of quality, flavor, tenderness, wholesomeness, safety, and, in the case of cooked product, doneness. Because color is so important to consumers, it is equally important to understand the science behind it. Having a better knowledge of meat purchasing, cooking, and eating will help decrease the amount of food that is mistakenly thought to be rotten, spoiled, or less nutritious and thrown away each year. In this educational video, we will discuss what myoglobin is, fresh meat chemistry, cured meat color, cooked meat color, factors that influence meat color, lipid oxidation, and how meat color is measured. Meat protein is categorized into three different classes, stromal, myofibular, and sarcoplasmic. For the purpose of this video, we will be focusing on the water-soluble sarcoplasmic proteins. Sarcoplasmic proteins are responsible for providing the color of meat. The main sarcoplasmic protein responsible for meat color is called myoglobin. Other pigments such as hemoglobin, cytochrome, and various catalase enzymes also contribute to meat color, but to a far lesser extent. The majority of hemoglobin is removed from the animal carcass during the bleeding or extanguination step of the slaughtering process. Myoglobin is an iron-based or heme protein that is found exclusively in heart and skeletal muscle cells. In live muscle, myoglobin function as an oxygen binding protein that stores and delivers oxygen to cells. After slaughtering and the conversion of muscle to meat, myoglobin's role then shifts to being the principal pigment of meat. Just as the color of meat differs from species to species, so does the amount of myoglobin present. The more myoglobin present, the darker the meat will appear. Myoglobin content is highest in beef, with less in pork and lamb, and the least amount in poultry. We will discuss the other factors that contribute to myoglobin content and influence meat color later in this video. Myoglobin has a very unique and purposeful chemical structure. At the protein's core sits a single iron atom that can bond with up to six other atoms. Four of these six available bonds are to nitrogen atoms within what is called a porphyrin ring structure. The fifth coordinate is bonded to a coiled globular protein structure that allows for interactions with other proteins. The sixth and final coordinate is the most important to meet color. This spot allows for reversible bonds with certain molecules called ligands that dictate what color the meat exhibits. Fresh meat chemistry involves oxidation reduction reactions, or better known as redox reactions. In these chemical reactions, electrons are gained and lost by specific species. When an electron is lost, it is called a reduction reaction. When an electron is gained, it is called an oxidation reaction. The figure in this slide illustrates the four chemical states of myoglobin, which ligand is attached to the sixth coordinate of the iron atom, and how the different states change and interact with one another. Oxidation is the enemy of quality in not just meat, but all food products. In the case of meat, everything eventually ends up being oxidized and converted to metmyoglobin, but it is the job of temperature control, packaging, and other tactics to delay these reactions from occurring. There are seven main reactions we will discuss. Reaction one is called oxygenation, or bloom. This reaction converts deoxymyoglobin to oxymyoglobin. The addition of oxygen is not the same as oxidation, as we discussed in the previous slide. Consumers prefer the red cherry color of oxymyoglobin and often discriminate against meat that is not this color. Reaction 2 
is called deoxygenation. This is the conversion of oxymyoglobin to deoxymyoglobin. Deoxygenation is the removal of oxygen from a system, for example, in vacuum package products. This reaction also occurs as a result of muscle cells consuming dissolved oxygen within the muscle tissue, but this is highly dependent on time and temperature. Intermuscular tissue is naturally this purple color and changes due to the exposure of oxygen. Reaction number three is called oxidation. Reaction three, or oxidation, is the conversion of deoxymyoglobin to metmyoglobin. Consumers often incorrectly associate the brown metmyoglobin color with old or spoiled meat. But this color change is just a result of the iron atom in the deoxymyoglobin complex losing an electron and experiencing oxidation. Deoxymyoglobin is very susceptible to oxidation and easily loses its electrons. Formation of metmyoglobin is significantly increased by temperature abuse and the subsequent growth of microorganisms. Molecules like citrate and phosphate inhibit metmyoglobin formation and antioxidants like vitamin E can slow down its formation. Reaction 4, called reduction, is the conversion of metmyoglobin to deoxymyoglobin. This reaction is the reverse of reaction 3. In this reaction, iron gains back the electron it lost and is reduced. This reaction is critical to shelf life and preservation of meat products. Meat processors want to encourage the reduced state of deoxymyoglobin to increase myoglobin's ability to react with other molecules, like oxygen, and maintain the meat's color appeal. This reaction is highly dependent on oxygen scavenging enzymes, reducing enzymes, and other chemicals that help carry electrons in redox reactions. These chemicals are abundant in live animals, but not so in post-mortem meat systems because the tissue is no longer alive. The fifth reaction is called deoxygenation and oxidation. This is the overall conversion of oxymyoglobin to metmyoglobin. But in this reaction, oxymyoglobin must first be converted to deoxymyoglobin before it can then be converted to metmyoglobin. People often just see the bright red color of oxymyoglobin converted directly to the brown color of metmyoglobin. But as the chemistry shows, this cannot happen. Oxymyoglobin must first be converted to deoxymyoglobin before it can be converted to metmyoglobin. Metmyoglobin formation begins beneath the cut surface of the meat where oxygen concentration is lower and deoxymyoglobin is present. The deoxymyoglobin beneath the meat surface slowly over time converts to metmyoglobin and spreads outward to the surface where it is visible. Reaction number six is called the addition of carbon monoxide. This is where deoxymyoglobin is converted to carboxymyoglobin. In modified atmosphere packaging, Carbon monoxide is used to bind to the vacant 6 ligand position of deoxymyoglobin. Myoglobin naturally has a greater attraction to carbon monoxide than to oxygen, resulting in a stable, bright cherry red color of carboxymyoglobin that gives the product a longer color shelf life. Using carbon monoxide in modified atmosphere packaging can present a problem in that the color can be so strong that it can last longer than the microbial shelf life of the product and mask spoilage that can occur. The last reaction, reaction number seven, is called dissipation. This is the conversion of carboxymyoglobin to oxymyoglobin. Over time, carbon monoxide will disassociate from myoglobin and be replaced with oxygen, forming oxymyoglobin. Then the oxymyoglobin will follow the same pathways as reactions two and three to deoxymyoglobin and metmyoglobin, respectively. Nitrate is a very unique and very important chemical in meat processing. Its main function is to inhibit the growth of bacteria that can form spores and survive harsh heating and freezing treatments. Nitrite also has a synergistic antimicrobial effect when combined with salt and other additives like lactate and erythorbate. It also works as an antioxidant by blocking myoglobin's interaction with oxygen, decreasing lipid or fat oxidation. Nitrate is also responsible for the familiar cured meat flavor and texture.
the amount of nitrite that can be added to meat products is strictly regulated and enforced. Here in this reaction we can see the interaction between nitrate and myoglobin and the full chemical reaction that results in nitrocele hemochrome. Here we are applying nitrite to two pieces of raw beef. Over a 10 minute period, we can see the chemical reaction take place. Nitrite acts as a strong oxidant to the heme pigment myoglobin, converting it to metmyoglobin while simultaneously reducing itself to nitric oxide. Nitric oxide then becomes bound to the heme group of metmyoglobin, forming nitric oxide metmyoglobin. Under anaerobic conditions or an oxygen reduced atmosphere, nitric oxide metmyoglobin is reduced to nitrocele myoglobin and the color changes from brown to an unstable bright red. Nitrite can react and bind to oxygen, making it unusable. Keeping it in an anaerobic environment will prevent this from happening. This reduction reaction is catalyzed and accelerated by decreasing the pH and adding reducing agents like sodium erythorbate and ascorbic acid, or vitamin C. The faster this reaction occurs, the better the flavor, color, and shelf life of the product. The reaction continues with unstable nitrocele metmyoglobin being heated, to its final stable form of nitrocele hemochrome. This stable pink color is sensitive to both light and oxygen and will fade to a dull gray color over time, which is why most cured products are vacuum packaged. Thermal processing gives metmyoglobin its characteristic cook color and appearance. Heat will cause metmyoglobin protein to unfold, denature, coagulate, and oxidize, forming complexes called globin hemochromes. Temperatures above 170 degrees Fahrenheit will result in a dull brown color, while lower temperatures will result in lower degrees of doneness. Rare, or 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and medium rare, 145 degrees Fahrenheit, have not fully denatured and still provide some red and pink colors to the cooked meat. But color is not an accurate indicator of product temperature or doneness. The different redox forms of metmyoglobin can affect the meat's cook color, making it appear more well done at lower cooking temperatures than it actually is. This phenomenon is known as premature browning. In this situation, a product only cooked to 130 or 135 degrees Fahrenheit will appear to be well done and fully cooked. This can pose a significant food safety hazard, especially to consumers who rely only on color as an indicator of doneness. As previously stated, metmyoglobin's denaturation temperature depends on the protein's redox state. More specifically, how resistant is the redox form of metmyoglobin of the meat to thermal denaturation? The resistance of metmyoglobin to heat-induced denaturation is shown here. Meat that has a higher source of overexposed oxymyoglobin and oxidized metmyoglobin is more apt to experience premature browning. Other factors that can increase the likelihood of premature browning include the source or the anatomical location of the muscle, fat content, storage temperatures, length of time in storage, pH of the meat, product packaging, and excess exposure to light. Manipulating the redox state of myoglobin by using carbon monoxide in MAP or vacuum packaging and adding antioxidants like sodium erythorbate have all been shown to decrease the chances of premature browning from occurring. Another quality issue that can occur because of the myoglobin denaturation is called persistent pink. This is a condition where the pigment becomes difficult to denature and remains stable during thermal processing, resulting in uncooked or undercooked colors appearing in fully cooked products. This is the opposite of premature browning. This can occur when myoglobin is in reduced deoxymyoglobin or oxymyoglobin redox state and is more common in meat with higher myoglobin content, like from older cows or bulls. This also occurs when the pH of the meat is higher than normal.
It is thought that the higher pH protects the myoglobin from heat denaturation and keeps the colors looking pink and undercooked. This change in endpoint temperature can lead to overcooking products and consumer rejection of microbiologically safe, fully cooked products. Using a meat thermometer is the only safe way to confirm the endpoint temperature and determine the doneness of a product. In the next part of the presentation, we will look into the factors that influence meat color. Here is a list of factors specific to the animals themselves that influence meat color. Concerning the age of the animal, there are two types of muscle fibers, white and red. White muscle fibers, known as fast twitch muscles, depend mostly on sugars for energy and not oxygen. As a result, white muscle fibers have a very low concentration of myoglobin. White muscle fibers are used for very short, very powerful bursts of energy, causing them to fatigue quickly. Concentration is highest at birth and decreases with age. Contrastly, red muscle fibers, known as slow twitch muscles, depend on oxygen and have a high myoglobin concentration. These muscle fibers have a very high tolerance to fatigue and are constantly in use for basic movements and function. Genetics also play a role in influencing the color of meat. Concerning genetics, stress genes can detrimentally affect color, protein denaturation, and cause huge changes in pH decline. Here are two such examples. The first called dark firm and dry, or DFD, and the second called pale soft exudative, or PSE. In the chart shown on this slide, we can see three different curves that represent the pH decline of carcasses hours after slaughter. The blue curve is a normal animal. The red curve represents an animal with a condition known as dark firm dry, or DFD. The green curve represents an animal with a condition called pale soft exudative, or PSE. Dark firm dry, or DFD, is a condition where the pH of the carcass remains high, resulting in more water retention, a drier, firmer texture, and a darker color appearance. Conversely, pale soft exudative, or PSE, is a condition where the pH of the carcass drops sharply after slaughter, resulting in water being expelled from the meat, a softer, stickier texture, and a very pale color. Other animal-specific factors include if the animal is wild or domestic, the diet and nutrition of the animal, physical activity, and even the season or the time of the year. Generally speaking, animals that are on a grass-fed diet result in darker colored meat because the diet tends to promote oxygen-based metabolism and red or slow-twitch muscle fibers. This next slide shows the pre-slaughter and post-slaughter conditions that can affect the animal and affect the color of the meat later on. Pre-slaughter conditions include the stresses the animal can experience during transportation and on the slaughter floor. Post-slaughter conditions include the stunning method used on the animal, the chilling rate of the carcass, the pH decline, and if the product is wet or dry aged. Here is a list of the endogenous factors that can influence meat color. These include the anatomical location of the muscle, chemical state of myoglobin, pH of the meat product, microbial load on the product, and lighting, to name a few. For more in-depth information on how lighting affects meat color, please see the Meat Lighting Facts brochure developed by Kansas State and Penn State University located on the AMP website, and there is a link to it in the description of this video. Here we have a list of the exogenous factors that contribute to meat color. These include the time in storage, the storage temperature, and the packaging material. It is impossible to discuss the oxidation of myoglobin without including the oxidation of lipids, or fats. Both reactions are closely linked with each catalyzing and spurring the other one on. Lipid oxidation is a process 
where polyunsaturated fatty acids, or PUFAs, react with unstable atoms called free radicals, causing additional degradation reactions of the lipids and the development of oxidative rancidity. This inevitable chemical reaction is one of the major causes of both sensory and nutritional quality degradation, as well as decreased shelf life and consumer rejection of meat products. The process of lipid oxidation begins at the time of slaughter with unsaturated fatty acids and cell membranes, called phospholipids, reacting with and having electrons stolen by free radicals, thereby causing a chain reaction. The process occurs in three different stages, initiation, propagation, and termination. During the initiation stage, a hydrogen atom is removed from a PUFA, abbreviated here as R, thereby creating a lipid radical. Proteins and various enzymes, all found within the muscle tissue, catalyze the initiation stage. Light, specifically ultraviolet light, also catalyzes lipid oxidation. The chain reaction continues into the propagation stage as more PUFAs are robbed of hydrogen atoms and exposed to oxygen, creating more lipid and peroxy radicals. These products, over time, will break down further into smaller byproducts. The termination stage of the lipid oxidation mechanism has the radical compounds generated in the previous stages stabilized into volatile and non-volatile non-radical compounds. This can be done with the addition of antioxidants donating hydrogen atoms to quench the reaction, or by lipid and peroxy radicals bonding together. The extent of lipid oxidation in post-mortem meat is highly dependent on the species of the animal. It is also dependent on the type of muscle and anatomical location of the muscle itself. Muscles with a higher concentration of myoglobin are more susceptible to lipid oxidation, making beef the most vulnerable. However, raw chicken is also extremely vulnerable to lipid oxidation when subjected to pro-oxidant environments, such as exposure to light or temperature abuse. Meat from grass-fed cattle is more prone to lipid and pigment oxidation compared to grain-fed because of the higher amount of unstable PUFAs. Lipid oxidation does not only apply to raw meat. Cooked meat products are even more susceptible to lipid oxidation because higher temperatures lead to the release of oxygen and iron, thereby stimulating the production of free radicals. As mentioned before, Myoglobin oxidation and lipid oxidation are strongly interwoven chemical reactions that occur concurrently and spur each other on. Byproducts of lipid oxidation have been linked to redox instability of oxymyoglobin and the promotion of metmyoglobin formation. During oxidation in the formation of metmyoglobin, molecules are generated which promote the creation of radical compounds. Antioxidants can provide stability to radical compounds and terminate lipid oxidation. They also improve and maintain meat color by reducing the ferric or F3 plus iron metmyoglobin to ferrous F2 plus iron and deoxymyoglobin. They also improve and maintain meat color by reducing metmyoglobin to deoxymyoglobin. While the animal is alive, there are many intrinsic factors working to prevent lipid oxidation, but these are consumed and stop functioning after slaughter and the conversion of muscle to meat. Therefore, it is important to add antioxidants to meat products either pre-harvest as a dietary supplement for the animal or post-harvest as ingredients in the products or as packaging materials. As seen in the slide here, antioxidants can either be synthetic or natural. Besides the addition of antioxidants, both color and lipid oxidation can be delayed by maintaining proper storage temperatures and protecting the products from high oxygen levels and light. Being able to measure and quantify meat color is extremely important in determining consumer preferences, studying the various redox states of myoglobin, and studying how factors like lighting or packaging can either preserve or deteriorate meat color. 
The LAB color space shown here is able to answer these questions accurately and to quantify meat color effectively. Red and green color values are represented by the letter A and range from positive 60 to negative 60. Yellow and blue color values are represented by the letter B and range from positive 60 to negative 60. Black and white are represented by the letter L and range from 0 to 100. The center of the color space is neutral gray. The letter C in this graph represents the term chroma, which is a measurement of a color's intensity or its distance from the gray center. The closer the color measurement is to the center, the duller it is. The more distant the color measurement is from the center, the more vivid it is. Hue is represented by the value H and is a measurement of how similar or different a color is to its primary color. In this case, red, blue, green, or yellow. Regarding meat products, measurements of L and A are more applicable to muscle color while B is a very reliable indicator of pH level in raw meat. This is extremely useful because pH is a very important determining factor for both fresh and cooked meat products. pH can influence and even inhibit myoglobin oxidation, protein denaturation, and solubility or product texture issues like persistent pink. L values are also an excellent indicator of PSE or DFD and are often used as a benchmark for the quality of fresh beef and pork. The A values are strongly influenced by pigment content and the redox state of myoglobin, while B values are just influenced by redox state. Meat color is dictated by a wide array of factors ranging from the diet of the animal to both the atmosphere and the temperature the meat is stored and packaged in. Myoglobin is heavily influenced during the conversion of muscle to meat and by its environment, resulting in significant changes to product appearance, shelf life, and consumer acceptability. Having a better understanding of the chemical reactions and mechanisms within meat and how to best limit them will result in a safer product with longer shelf life and above all, create less food waste.